Welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, author of On This Day in Tudor History. Now, what happened today? Well, I'm taking you back, along with Madge, um, who's now going to sit in front of the camera. She likes to hog the limelight. Taking you back to 1620. Now, not in Tudor times, but it's actually to do with a man who became famous in Tudor times. But on this day in history, the 16th of May, 1620, navigator William Adams died in Hirado in Japan. Now, Adams is thought to be the first Englishman to have reached Japan, and he arrived there in 1600, so right at the end of Queen Elizabeth I's reign. And he was the inspiration for the character of John Blackthorne in the famous novel Shogun. Let me give you a few facts about this Tudor navigator. Well, William Adams was born in September 1564 in Gillingham in Kent, and he was the son of John Adams. Nothing is known of his early life except that he worked as an apprentice to shipbuilder Nicholas Diggins in Limehouse, London between the ages of 12 and 24. In 1588, which was of course at the time of the Spanish Armada, Adams served as master of a 120-ton supply ship called the Richard Diffield. After that, he served as pilot and master for 10 years for the Barbary Company, which traded with Morocco. In 1589, he married Mary Hinn, and they had two children together. In 1598, when he was 34, Adams was recruited by the Dutch to pilot the Hoop, the Admiral's ship, on a voyage via the Strait of Magellan to the East Indies for spices and other products, with the added incentive of attacking Spanish settlements in South America. They left Rotterdam on the 27th of June 1598 and reached the coast of Brazil on the 2nd of January 1599 and the Strait of Magellan on the 6th of April 1599. However, they couldn't pass through due to the winter weather, and it was September when they eventually cleared the strait. Unfortunately, due to Spanish attacks and the weather, only two ships, the Hoop and the Leifter, made the arranged rendezvous in November 1599 off the island of St. Mary, and even they had suffered attacks by Indians. And sadly, Adam's brother Thomas had been killed. By this time, Adams was on the leafter rather than the hoop. The remaining crews decided to sail to Japan, where they believed that they could sell their cloth. Unfortunately, they encountered trouble once again, being attacked while sailing near the Hawaiian Islands, and also a storm in February 1600 saw the ships becoming separated and the hoop perishing. In April 1600, the Leifter arrived in Japan off the coast of Bungo. It was the first non-Iberian European ship to reach the country, and William Adams was the first Englishman to do so. In May 1600, Adams was called before Regent, and I'm going to say this terribly sorry to any Japanese that are listening, Tokugawa Ie Ieyasu, to explain where he'd come from. Adams was able to persuade him that he and his crew were not the thieves and robbers that previous European visitors, the Jesuits and Portuguese, had made them out to be, and to explain that they were there to trade. He hit it off with Ieyasu, which was good because later that year, Ieyasu took power after defeating his opponents in battle, becoming Shogun of Japan. The shogun was also keen on expanding trade. Although Adams was very much welcomed to Japan, he wanted to go home to his family after the negotiations with Ieyasu. However, his ship had been destroyed and his shipbuilding and navigational skills were valued by the Japanese. He ended up becoming one of the shogun's advisors, helping particularly with European matters, mathematics and geometry. In return for his service, he was given land. Adams became involved with a Japanese woman and she had two children by him. However, he continued to support his family back in England by sending them money. 
He also had another child in Japan, but little is known about the mother and the child. Adams was also able to help Japan by acting as an interpreter between the Shogun and the Dutch, and also the English, in trade negotiations. After successful negotiations between the English and Japanese in 1613, Adams was employed by the English company in Harado for three years. During that time, he took two voyages to Siam. Adams was eventually given permission to leave for England, but he decided to stay in Japan, and he made three further voyages between 1617 and 1619, two bound for Fifo and one to Tonking. Adams died on this day in history, the 16th of May, 1620, in Hirado. According to the terms of his will, half his estate went to his wife and surviving child in England, a daughter Deliverance, and the other half went to his children, Joseph and Susanna, in Japan. Adams was buried in Japan. James Clavell's famous novel Shogun, which was adapted for TV, was based on Adams' story, which has also inspired many other works of fiction. Obviously, this is a very brief overview of William Adams, and if you'd like to know more about him, then I'd recommend Samurai William, The Adventurer Who Unlocked Japan by Giles Milton. Also on this day in Tudor history, the 16th of May, 1568, following her escape from prison in Scotland, Mary, Queen of Scots, landed on English soil and was taken prisoner once more, but this time by the English. Why was she taken prisoner? Well, you can find out what happened in last year's video, which I'll give you a link to. And on this day in 1536, the condemned Queen Anne Boleyn's spirits seemed to have been lifted and she was hoping for mercy. Why? What could have made her so helpful? Well, you can find out in my video on that, which I'll also give you a link to. You can subscribe by clicking round about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live and you can, of course, give me a like and leave me a comment. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.